Many of the same problems that we ran into with testing Neon FMs in remote areas of the world with really poor internet are some of the same problems we ran into when we were developing Neon FM for mobile. But now that we've used this technique, amongst others, to work all the bugs out, you can download Neon FM, the full arcade experience, from the Google Play Store, the iPhone App Store, even on your Amazon device. So, give it a shot. In America, the internet flows pretty smoothly. Every now and then you'll get a drop packet here or there, but for the most part, all of your data gets through, and it gets through really quick. So that's good, except when you're developing a video game that needs to be used all over the world, where the internet's not so good. There's bugs that you might not find when you're testing from an American connection, and so you'll run into sometimes a need to test on a really awful connection. It's not just for video games, but say for websites, if you want to understand just how awful it's going to be for that person in Africa to go use your website, you might want to check it out. The way we're actually doing this is this game here. Well, look at that, the whole thing just froze. Gotta figure out what's going on. Shouldn't be freezing here, should just keep on rolling. What we actually have is the internet right here, this little blue cable is plugged in right there to the LAN ports on here. And we have in the WAN port plugged in this machine right here, this arcade machine. And thankfully, this is actually running OpenWRT, which is something you can do at least on this particular TP-Link. And it running OpenWRT allows us to go write software that runs on the router itself. So I have LameNet here and because it's just a uh, basically like a Linux machine, it's just got a, a regular interface, so I can just SSH into it. Boom! Open WRT. And I can just uh, execute things, like I can run LameNet ETH0, which is the first Ethernet device, and ETH1, which is the second. And right now it's running and any of the packets that it's seeing on one interface, it's delaying for a period of time and sometimes dropping and passing off to the other interface and back. So while this is fun and dandy for trying to figure out, okay, well, if it's just bad, do things work at all? Uh, we can actually do a little bit better. I can uh, run this here and What this does is it pushes a copy I just built to it along with special parameters. Ones that make it so that it passes all the packets, very, very little random delay, but 1,000 milliseconds between every packet. So, hold on here, let's run that again. What we'll end up seeing is, once the ARP is resolved to the machine, we see two second pings. That's because in each direction, we're waiting one second to pass the packet. So it's an extra two seconds round trip. By running this on the router, we get to then simulate a really, really bad network connection between the internet and the machine. So now, the machine, if we give it a second here, is going to just probably freeze up and we can start to debug what's going on. How do we debug it, you ask? Well, conveniently, since OpenWRT is basically like a Linux system, I can go kill my process here, and I can go pull a copy of the packet capture. So now, I can open up Wireshark here, which has all of the packets that went across that connection and when they were actually transmitted on it, and I can find out what exactly was going on when the system failed filter by TCP and identify the connection in which that everything fell apart. So we can figure out how to make this freeze go away to make our game work even on really awful internet connections. So whether you have a web page and you want to see what it's like for somebody with an awful internet connection or you're trying to write a video game, feel free to check this out on GitHub over at LameNet. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you learned something from it. And uh, thanks.